Welcome back into the world of cross-dressing stories. Now, please consider subscribing and check out my Patreon for more exclusive goodies. As a corporate professional, my life often feels like a series of unending business trips and hotel rooms. I'm Mel, and on the surface, it looks like I've got it all together. Sharp suits, polished shoes, a briefcase always at the ready. But beneath that facade, there's a part of me that very few know about. I'm a cross-dresser, and for the longest time, I felt trapped by the societal expectations that dictate how a man should dress and behave. My story isn't just about the clothes I wear, it's about the freedom and the authentic self-expression they bring me. Cross-dressing for me isn't a hobby, it's a part of who I am. However, due to the stigma, I've always kept this aspect of my life incredibly private, tucked away like the dresses and skirts hidden in the back of my closet. The reality of being a cross-dresser is complex. When you're constantly worried about judgment from others, you learn to guard your secrets fiercely. I learned this the hard way. There's always a lingering fear that someone might discover this part of my life, and the consequences could be detrimental. Lost friendships, a career in jeopardy, and the potential for estrangement from those who might not understand. Despite these risks, every time I travel for work, I see it as an opportunity. My business trips are my escape, my little bubbles of time where I can truly be myself. The relief and exhilaration I feel when I finally enter my hotel room, close the door behind me, and start unpacking, not just my business attire, but also the articles of clothing that truly reflect my identity, is indescribable. When I cross-dress, I don't just put on women's clothing. I embrace a part of my soul that feels suppressed in daily life. It's a transformation that goes beyond the physical. With every piece of clothing, from the soft feel of the fabric against my skin to the delicate weight of a necklace, I become more aligned with my true self. It's not about performing, it's about being. When I look in the mirror and see myself fully dressed as I feel inside, there's a profound sense of rightness, an affirmation that this is who I am. But it's not without its emotional turmoil. There's ex excitement. Yes, but also an underlying anxiety. What if someone knocks on the door? What if housekeeping comes in unexpectedly? Each moment holds a breath of fear mixed with the joy of liberation. In these stolen moments, away from the eyes of the world, I explore the depths of my identity. The joy of being able to express myself openly, even in such a limited scope, brings me immense happiness. But it's always shadowed by the reality of the world outside that door, the world that might not accept or understand Mel, the man under the makeup and dresses. This duality of existence, the joy of self-expression weighed against the fear of discovery, is a constant battle. It's a poignant reminder of the dichotomies many of us face, hiding parts of ourselves that we fear the world isn't ready to see. But in these moments, brief and fleeting, I find myself. And for now, that has to be enough. On this particular trip, a two-week assignment to Eastern Europe, I decided to take a significant step. Typically, I packed only a few items of feminine attire, enough to feel a fleeting sense of completeness in the privacy of my room. But this time, driven by a deeper yearning for authenticity and a bit of the thrill that danger brings, I packed extensively. Dresses, skirts, blouses, heels, and the full array of makeup. Each item was chosen with care, each one a bold assertion of my identity. The decision wasn't made lightly. The risk of being exposed was much higher, especially traveling internationally where security checks and customs might too closely inspect my luggage. The thought of my suitcase being opened, revealing its contents to the scrutinizing eyes of airport security, sent shivers down my spine. Yet, there was an exhilarating rush in the danger, a taste of true freedom that comes from flirting with discovery. I remember sitting on the plane, my heart pounding, not just from the turbulence. Tucked away in the overhead compartment, my suitcase felt like a ticking bomb, ready to expose my deepest secret to the world. I wondered if anyone could notice the nervousness that I masked with a calm demeanor. When the flight attendant smiled at me, did she see the man worried about customs, or did she see through to the soul aching to express itself freely? Landing in Eastern Europe, the walk to customs was the longest trek I had ever felt. Each step was heavy with trepidation and anticipation. The customs officer called me forward, and as he flipped through my passport, my mind raced with possibilities. 
What would I say if he asked about the contents of my suitcase? How would I explain the delicate balance of my dual existence? But the question never came. He stamped my passport, nodded, and waved me through. The relief was overwhelming, yet it was quickly replaced by the realization that this was just the first of many hurdles. Checking into the hotel, I found myself on high alert, watching for any sign of judgment from the staff as I wheeled in my luggage, its contents a secret arsenal of my true self. Once in my room, the real journey began. I unpacked my things slowly, savoring the freedom of laying out my wardrobe openly. Each piece was a statement, a rebellion against the constraints I faced back home. There was a profound sense of liberation in arranging my clothes, setting up my makeup, transforming this foreign, impersonal hotel room into a sanctuary of self-expression. That first night, as I dressed completely, not just in bits and pieces, but fully embodying the woman inside me, I looked in the mirror and saw not Mel, the corporate professional, but Melissa, confident, beautiful, real. It was an overwhelming experience. For the first time, I wasn't just dabbling in the margins of my identity. I was diving deep into it, embracing it fully and without the usual shadows of fear that clung to the corners of my makeshift sanctuaries back home. The thrill was intoxicating. I felt alive, vibrant, and true to myself in ways that words could barely capture. It wasn't just about the clothes or the makeup. It was about the wholeness of the experience, the integrity of the moment. Melissa wasn't just a hidden part of me. She was me, in all her complexity and vibrancy, stepping out into the light, even if it was only the lamplight of a hotel room in Eastern Europe. The emotional roller coaster of that evening, from fear to exhilaration, from suppression to expression, was a microcosm of my life as a crossdresser. It encapsulated the highs and lows, the risks and rewards, the pain and the profound joy of being true to oneself. Navigating through the streets of Eastern Europe in my true form was a delicate dance of shadows and light. There was an intoxicating mix of freedom and fear as I stepped out into the twilight of the city. Melissa was no longer confined to the sterile ambiance of a hotel room. She was part of the bustling, breathing world. The cool air felt liberating on my skin, lightly brushed with makeup that was meticulously applied to reflect how I felt inside, vibrant and alive. However, with every step I took down the cobblestone streets, my heart raced with a dual beat of exhilaration and anxiety. I was acutely aware of every glance that slid my way, every whisper that might have been about me. The joy of self-expression was shadowed by the looming fear of negative reactions or confrontation. This part of the world held a conservative heartbeat that might not tolerate or accept the person I was beneath the surface. Each interaction at cafes or shops was a test a moment where I balanced on the razor's edge between affirmation and fear. Despite the undercurrent of anxiety, the freedom of being Melissa in public brought an immense sense of joy. For years, these moments of authenticity had been fleeting, hidden behind closed doors or the anonymity of night. Now, here I was, walking openly, the setting sun casting long shadows that seemed to blur the lines between male and female, between the expected and the true. Yet the emotional journey was taxing. Each evening, as I returned to the safety of my hotel, I felt a draining mix of relief and sadness. Relief that I had navigated another day without incident, and sadness that the relief felt necessary at all. It was a poignant reminder of the compartmentalization required to live as a crossdresser in a society that might not understand or accept my identity. The solitude of the hotel room offered a quiet space to reflect on these complexities. Each night, as I removed my makeup and changed back into Mel's attire, I felt a profound sense of loss. The contrast between Mel's world of constraints and Melissa's world of color and vibrancy was stark. It was in these quiet moments, sitting alone with my thoughts, that I truly grappled with the weight of my double life. Yet there was also a growing sense of resilience building within me. Each day spent as Melissa, each interaction navigated successfully, each moment of fear overcome added layers to my confidence. I was learning not just to exist, but to live fully within my identity, despite the external pressures and internal fears. This emotional journey was not just about the highs of freedom and the lows of fear. It was about the gradual forging of an identity that could withstand the complexities of my reality. It was a testament to the strength required to live authentically, 
in a world that might not always welcome you with open arms. Each day, each moment as Melissa was a step towards reconciling the internal conflict between who society expected me to be and who I truly was. As I continued to navigate these experiences, I realized that the journey itself was reshaping me, not just as Mel or Melissa, but as a fuller, more complete human being, embracing all facets of my identity with courage and newfound pride. One evening, while returning to my hotel, an unexpected encounter tipped the scales of my carefully managed existence. A local police patrol, responding to what they perceived as suspicious behavior, stopped me. The questions came quick and sharp, cutting through the air like the chill of the night. As they realized the discrepancy between my appearance and the identity on my documents, their demeanor shifted from curiosity to disdain. The situation escalated quickly, and before I knew it, I was taken into custody. The fear and isolation of that moment were paralyzing. Sitting in a cold, stark police station, I felt a mix of shame and terror. I was far from home, in a place less accepting of my identity, caught in the nightmare I had always dreaded. It was during this bleak moment that Eva appeared, like a beacon in the tumultuous storm of my ordeal. Eva was a social worker, assigned to handle cases that involved foreign nationals. From the moment she entered the room, her presence was calming. She approached me with a gentleness that felt alien in the harsh environment of the police station. Her eyes met mine, not with judgment or suspicion, but with an understanding and empathy that nearly brought me to tears. After dealing with the formalities and clearing up the misunderstandings with the police, Eva talked to them about the delicate nature of my situation. It was evident she was well-versed in the struggles faced by individuals like myself, and her advocacy on my behalf was both passionate and knowledgeable. Once everything was settled and it was clear I was no longer in legal jeopardy, Eva offered to take me to a facility that she described as a space for people like me. The facility was a nondescript building tucked away in a quiet part of the city. Inside, it transformed into a sanctuary for those who live dual lives, much like myself. The warm lighting and soft colors of the interior were a stark contrast to the bleakness of the police station. Here, Eva introduced me to others who shared similar stories, similar fears, and similar dreams. It was a community that thrived on acceptance and mutual support, a place where one could be their authentic self without the mask that society often forced us to wear. Eva became not just my rescuer, but my guide into a community I never knew existed. She helped me navigate the complex emotions that came with my release and acceptance into this new circle. With each story shared by the residents, I felt a piece of my isolation chip away, replaced by a growing sense of belonging. Over the next few days, Eva and I had many conversations. She was not only sympathetic, but deeply insightful, offering perspectives that challenged and comforted me. She understood the joy and the burden of the double life I led, and she helped me see that my identity was not a liability, but a profound expression of my true self. This period under Eva's guidance was transformative. I began to view my experiences not just as a series of secretive acts, but as a journey towards self-acceptance. Eva taught me that while the world might not always understand or accept me, there were places and people where I could find acceptance and even celebration. Through Eva's support, I found a new kind of freedom, a freedom not defined by secrecy, but by the open acceptance of my complexities. She was more than a supportive character in my story. She was a mentor who showed me how to find light in the shadows and strength in my identity, reshaping how I viewed myself and my place in the world. The conflict that began with my arrest intensified as I grappled with the stark reality of my situation. Suddenly, the freedom and self-expression I cherished were under threat, not just from external judgments, but from my own internal fears. I was trapped not only in a foreign country, but also within the confines of a society that seemed unwilling to accept the nuances of my identity. During my time at the facility, I faced the daunting task of reconciling my internal conflicts with the external realities. As supportive as the environment was, the echoes of societal disdain were hard to silence. Questions and doubts circled my mind incessantly. Was embracing Melissa worth the potential for alienation and danger? Could I truly live openly as myself, 
or was I doomed to a life of hiding and fear? It was during this time of turmoil that Eva's role became crucial. Through counseling sessions and heartfelt discussions within the community, I slowly started to see a different perspective. Eva encouraged me to delve into the deeper aspects of my identity, to understand that the essence of who I was transcended the societal labels and restrictions placed upon me. As days turned into weeks, the facility provided not just refuge, but a re-education of sorts. Through workshops, shared experiences, and personal stories, I learned about resilience in the face of adversity. I heard stories of others who had navigated similar paths, who had faced discrimination and fear, yet had emerged stronger and more confident in their identities. These stories inspired a shift in my own perception. The real turning point came during a group session where we were asked to share our deepest fears and hopes. Speaking my fears aloud, I exposed them to the light of day and in doing so began to diminish their power over me. The empathy and understanding I received in return emboldened me. I realized that every fear shared was a step away from isolation, and every hope voiced was a step toward unity and self-acceptance. With Eva's guidance and the community's support, I began to reshape my understanding of what it meant to be true to myself. The internal conflict that once tormented me started to dissolve, replaced by a newfound clarity and purpose. I embraced Melissa not just as a hidden part of me, but as an integral aspect of my whole self. The resolution came gradually as I accepted that my identity did not need to be confined by geographic or societal boundaries. Eva helped me develop strategies to cope with and challenge societal norms safely and constructively. I learned to navigate the complexities of my identity with a balance of caution and courage, using the supportive environment as a stepping stone to broader acceptance. By the time I left the facility, my perspective had transformed. I no longer saw Melissa as a secret to be hidden, but as a truth to be lived, even if that meant challenging norms and facing potential setbacks. The acceptance I felt within the facility gave me the confidence to seek and foster similar environments and relationships elsewhere, to build a life where Melissa could exist not just in secluded moments, but as a full, vibrant participant in the world. In this way, the conflict was not just resolved, but transcended, turning a story of fear and suppression into one of empowerment and self-celebration. The journey was far from over, but I was now equipped with the tools, the confidence, and the community support to continue it with my head held high. The transformation I experienced at the facility was profound and life-altering. The longer I stayed, the more I felt Melissa becoming not just a part of me I visited in private moments, but a permanent, integral part of my being. The acceptance and support of the community fostered a sense of belonging that I had never fully experienced before. It was as if I had discovered a new way to breathe, one that filled me with life more completely than I had ever imagined possible. Over time, the sharp edges of fear and apprehension that once defined my existence began to soften. The anxiety that accompanied my outings as Melissa diminished, replaced by a confident calmness. I learned to navigate the world not as two separate entities, Mel and Melissa, but as a cohesive self, with Melissa's attributes enhancing all aspects of my life. This integration was healing, a balm to the fragmented way I had lived for so long. In this supportive environment, I found not just tolerance, but celebration of diversity. The workshops, the shared experiences, and the collective courage of the community showed me that my journey was not just about acceptance by others, but about self-acceptance. I embraced my identity fully, shedding the remnants of doubt and fear that had clung to me like shadows. As I prepared to leave the facility and return home, I felt a surge of gratitude and empowerment. The lessons I learned and the acceptance I received had equipped me with the tools to face the world with a new perspective. I knew that challenges awaited me, but I also knew that I possessed the strength to meet them head on. Conclusion. Looking back on my journey now, I see it not as a series of hardships, but as a transformative adventure. The initial arrest and the fear of discovery seem like distant memories, stepping stones that led me to a place of profound inner peace. In embracing Melissa, I discovered not just my true self, but also a resilience and joy that I had never known. This story is more than just my own. 
It is a testament to the power of authenticity and the beauty of living a life true to oneself. It speaks to the courage required to defy conventions and the rewards that come from doing so. It is a reminder that while the journey towards self-acceptance can be fraught with challenges, the destination is replete with a peace and self-love that make every step worthwhile. As I share my story, I do so with the hope that it might light a path for others struggling with their identity to show that while the road may be tough, it leads to a place of unmatched beauty and truth. The peace and self-acceptance I have achieved by embracing Melissa are my life's greatest accomplishments, treasures that I carry forward each day as I continue to navigate the world as my most authentic self.